So uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, very warm welcome from me as well. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Matthew, for the organization and for this uh, short but very nice uh, introduction. Uh, just a few words about Unica. Uh, Unica uh, is a network of uh, 55 universities in uh, 38 capital cities. It's an important uh, European organization uh, based in Brussels. Uh, we are 30 years old. And the Unica Green uh, is an important working group uh, of Unica. It was created in 2010, following the request by our students. We organized a student conference in 2010 in Rome, and the students said, uh, but why among all the possible activities? Uh, Unica was very active, of course, at that time as well. Uh, you don't have a group uh, uh, dedicated to uh, you know, sustainable development, uh, to, green, uh, uh, to greening, I mean, our universities. And so following this suggestion, we created uh, the Unica Green Group, which has been very active. I participated myself uh, in several meetings. I saw the quality of this group, uh, very interesting in discussion and very high uh, engagement. Uh, recently, we have to say there was a broader interest of the group around the SDGs. So not only the SDG 13, but also the others are very important. And I really like uh, you know, the title of the, the event today, the social and civic responsibility, adopting a whole institutional approach. I think this is very important for UNICA universities. Uh, usually we have a, a comprehensive, uh, quite large uh, research intensive universities. So I think that uh, sustainable development should be approached uh, again in, uh, in, uh, in this way. So um, unfortunately, I will not be able to stay with you today. I was really looking forward to this event, but I have a conflict with another activity, unfortunately. Uh, but I really saw the program is uh, super interesting. Uh, I see the intervention from uh, different uh, Unica universities with high level speakers. So I'm sure that uh, uh, the discussion will be very interesting. I also noticed with pleasure that you decided to have a discussion in small groups. I think this is also a good approach, uh, which is allowed by Zoom. So it's not exactly the same uh, before, uh, we, before COVID. Of course, we were doing this event uh, in person. Now they are online. But still, I think uh, these new tools uh, allow a good quality uh, you know, discussion. And uh, Unica is quite active in webinars. I invite you to look at the, you know, the website of, of Unica because we really do uh, many activities, not only related to this group, but in general uh, related to, to research, education, internationalization, et cetera. So um, I don't want to take too much time. I want to thank uh, again, uh, Matthew Lawson, uh, the student uh, engagement events and reporting manager at the University of Edinburgh, is an excellent uh, UNICA member. I want to thank very much uh, Ines Cabrita, uh, who is the chair of this group, uh, the Unica Green and SDG group, and she's also project manager at Université Libre de Bruxelles in, uh, in Belgium. I want to thank uh, all the distinguished speakers that are, are going to contribute to this event today, and of course, uh, the Secretariat in, uh, in Brussels uh, with uh, Vicky Xonka and Laura Colò and others who are always uh, you know, very efficient and very so I wish you a very nice, very fruitful uh, you know, webinar, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again in another unique event. Have a good day. So <clears throat> thanks, Luciano. So I, I'm going to be very quick also. So as Luciano said, uh, Unica Green and SDG is really the networks platform to exchange good practices on uh, sustainability. Um, it's a place where universities that face the, the same challenges can help each other. So in the past, we focused mainly on environmental issues and uh, campus management. But recently, we really um, widening uh, we, our discussions to meet the more comprehensive uh, concept of sustainability. So for example, a few years ago, we had a workshop about how to integrate sustainability in education. And uh, today's webinar is really uh, in line with this new approach. So I would like uh, the, to thank the University of Edinburgh for uh, promoting it and all the speakers to share their learnings and experiences. If you want to know more about the uh, Unica Green and SDG activities, please just get in touch. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the interesting discussions we will have, so. Okay, now I hand over to Matthew. Luciano, Ines, thank you so much for those opening remarks. Very much appreciate you, your time uh, today. Um, just a reminder, if you're not speaking currently, if you could just turn off your microphones, 
just so we uh, reduce the risk of any feedback. But what I'll do now, I'll just start sharing my slides. Fantastic. Uh, well, as you're aware, this webinar is being recorded. And after each presentation today, we ask you to put any questions in the chat function. In terms of our lineup of speakers, I'll be providing a bit of context before going into a case study about the University of Edinburgh. We then have Helen, the Vice Rector for Sustainable Development from the University of Tallinn, followed by Peter, the Vice Rector for Research from the University of Belgrade, but last but not least, we have Bronwyn, the Interim Vice President and Vice Principal Services from King's College London. Each presentation will take between seven to eight minutes, followed by a couple of minutes for questions. And then after the presentations, we'll go into breakout rooms where we have a number of questions for you to frame your discussions. Then we'll come out of those breakout rooms and we'll share any kind of key findings from those discussions. But again, uh, a very warm welcome to this UNICA webinar, which is going to be focusing on social and civic responsibility, looking at how universities adopt a whole institution approach. And I think it's fair to say that the coronavirus global health pandemic has brought into sharp focus the role of universities in local communities, but also global society. We are seeing examples of universities play a key role in deriving the response to the global health pandemic through vaccine development and research. Furthermore, universities are acting as pillars in their towns, cities and regions to support local communities during this moment. Universities have also been name checked as playing a key role in supporting the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals through everything they do. So looking at academic research, learning and teaching, people, operations, and partnerships. This has further been emphasized through preparations for the upcoming UN Climate Change Conference in Glasgow, where universities will play a key role by presenting research, by observing negotiations, and by analyzing the discussions for various audiences. These collective efforts demonstrate the key role universities play, perhaps even more impressive when you consider the challenges we face as society, and also some of the financial challenges that universities are facing currently. This event will provide a lens into how universities are extending their influence to positively impact society and the environment. We will gain insights into the opportunities and also some of the challenges through some short presentations followed by group discussions towards the end of this session. So I hope that has provided you with some context. But what I'm gonna do now is just provide you with some kind of observations about our experience at the University of Edinburgh. And to do that, I think it's really helpful to understand what is the University of Edinburgh in terms of its staff and student community, its physical infrastructure, but also its activities more widely. So essentially, we are one of the largest towns in Scotland. Uh, we have a community of staff and students that are just under 60,000. That includes students who take degrees on campus, but also those students who take degrees online. We have a turnover of over a billion uh, pounds, and we have the third largest endowment fund in the, the UK. We have large supply chains, very complex supply chains, stretching from Edinburgh all the way across the world. And we have a very, very diverse estate with traditional buildings, such as McEwen Hall, you see in that picture in the center, to research modern facilities covering medicine, but also looking at wave and tidal energy. We provide a range of short online courses called MOOCs, we have a wide variety of research skills covering the humanities, science and engineering, and also medicine and veterinary medicine. And in 2014, I was very proud to be part of the team that established the Department for Social Responsibility and Sustainability. So that's hopefully giving you an overview 
of uh, what the University of Edinburgh is. But I think to me, the main focus is really trying to highlight that our university is in a very unique and privileged position. And we need to ensure the staff and students that our positive impacts outweigh our negative impacts. So there's a responsibility on the university community to make sure we are positively impacting local and global communities. And why are we doing this? Why do we want to do this? Well, we every two years, we publish an all staff and student survey focusing on sustainability and social and civic responsibility issues. And it's very clear to us that the university community holds these issues as priorities and they want the university to be taking action. And I think this is further emphasised by the volume of staff and students who participated in the global climate strikes. And also, I think it's worth bearing in mind that a lot more nowadays we are seeing comments by government, we are seeing requests by research funders that they want universities to be leading the way in contributing towards the sustainable development goals, but also providing solutions to the climate crisis. And I think it's important to recognise that, you know, we can't make decisions in private anymore as universities. What we do has a public impact and there's a growing focus in the media, social media, throughout our communities about how universities are actually behaving. And there's some examples here from our experience ranging from responsible investment, looking at student accommodation in local communities and also looking at how we treat our staff as well. And from all of that, uh, a couple of years ago, um, the university published a new strategy, Strategy 2030. And in that strategy, there were four key areas, including one focused on social and civic responsibility. And this was on the back of extensive consultation with staff and students. And it was the first university strategy that contained a set of common values that we were to aspire to. And just last year, on the back of Strategy 2030, the university published a new social and civic responsibility plan, which used the SDGs as a framework to map on our objectives and one cross-cutting theme. So our objectives aim to make sure the university becomes carbon neutral by 2040, uh, to be as, as zero waste university as much as we can by 2030, to make sure that we are widening access to education and employment, to strengthen our links to local communities and to embed the SDGs across everything we do. Essentially, everything we do needs to try and provide a positive impact to society and the environment. And just very quickly, some examples of what we've been doing in action. Um, the university has committed to invest up to eight million pounds in social investments. And by the end of last year, we had invested £3.75 million into various social funds, providing funds for social enterprises, startups, but also supporting local communities respond to the coronavirus pandemic. We've also significantly reduced our carbon uh, emissions. Uh, we have reduced below 15% compared to our baseline. And we've just recently uh, built a new solar farm out at our Easter Bush campus, which will provide electricity in the region of about over a thousand megawatts. So that will power that campus. We've also recently launched a new community uh, plan that sets out 32 specific practical commitments. And of course, like many universities, we are focusing on how we can support and address government and society action in terms of the coronavirus pandemic. But just lastly, I just want to kind of focus on looking ahead and maybe some of the kind of opportunities and challenges that we are facing. Currently, the SDGs and the climate crisis are not mainstreamed in our academic curriculum and they need to be. So that's why the university is undertaking a significant curriculum review. And we're hoping following that, every student will have the opportunity to engage with these issues. We also want to make sure that staff have the opportunity to volunteer in, the, in their local communities. We also want to make sure that every committee paper needs to address the SDGs and the climate crisis, like we do with the quality and diversity. 
We also recognise that we need to go further in tackling racism. There's been a number of incidents online and on campus recently, and we need to do a better job there. So we need to have stronger action, both looking at racism now, but also historic links to racism. And lastly, we need to make sure that our university is playing a key role in supporting society recover from the global health pandemic. Brilliant. So that's it for me. Hopefully that's given you a bit of a quick overview of how the university has started to address social and civic responsibility issues and also maybe some of the practical actions we're taking as well as some of the opportunities and challenges we face as well. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen and I would welcome any questions in the chat box. So if you've got any questions, please do put them in and I'll respond to a few just in a few seconds or so. Thank you very much for that question there. Uh, so that question is looking at, do you encounter any dilemmas in reaching your aims? For instance, looking at inclusion versus carbon neutral. How do you handle international traveling of staff and students? A really good question. Well, what we've actually recently done, our university executive this week has just agreed to a new business travel policy, which will ensure that staff who travel domestically in the future will need to travel by train and not air. We're also prioritizing a digital first approach to meetings as well and providing incentives for staff to take low carbon travel options going forward. We're doing a bit of work in terms of looking at the footprint of international students, but it's always going to be there. So there's a bit of a question about how do you kind of offset that? Because any organization, even though you reduce carbon emissions a lot, they'll still have some in their normal activity. So how do you offset that? So we're looking into that at the moment. So thank you very much for that question. If anyone else has any further questions, please pop them in the chat box and I'll get to you during the next presentation. But what I'd like to do now is hand over to Helen. Helen is the Vice Rector for Sustainable Development from the University of Tallinn. So Helen, if you can take the 